Are you tired of bottling your beer? You want to jump into kegging? Kind of concerned on how hard it might be? <laughs> Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how easy it really is. Hello everyone, Coach Chris here with Wolf Moon Brewing. Today we're going to keg this beer. Might sound difficult, it's actually very simple. First step you need to do in kegging a beer, or bottling it for that matter, is a few days prior to kegging and bottling, you need to start keeping track of what the specific gravity is of your beer. Once activity has slowed down dramatically or stopped in your airlock, it's time to take a measurement of, your, of the specific gravity of your beer and do that for three straight days. I'm a little OCD, so I do it for four. Once I have four days that my specific gravity has stayed exactly the same, this beer is ready to be kegged. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to take one final measurement today and make sure that my specific gravity is still the same at 1.009. Just going to remove our clamps, remove our airlock, Oop. take the top off, and take our clean and sanitized hydrometer and put it right into the fermenter. Okay, I've taken the hydrometer out and I put the lid back on with the bubbler just loosely on top so nothing falls into it while we continue doing the next process. First thing we want to do is get the keg ready. We're going to release any pressure that's in here. On your keg, there should be a pressure release valve. You just pull that up. And if there's any pressure, and you can turn it 90 degrees and we'll hold it open. Then flip your handle up and pop your lid in. Turn it 90 degrees and it'll come right out. Next thing you want to do is you want to remove your two posts. These posts, for me, is a 7 8 wrench. Just give them a little turn with the wrench, pull them out. On the inside, the post will be a little bit different looking than on the outside. The inside will actually Hopefully your keg will say in and out, and the post will actually have a little notch in the bottom of it. I take it one step further and I replace all my gaskets. On the inside I use a red gasket, and on the outside I use a black gasket. Just makes life a little easier when you're doing things. On the inside you're going to have this short little post with a rubber gasket, and I always slide the gasket down a little bit from the top of the post for cleaning. We'll take the outside off, same thing, a little bit of a turn with the wrench, remove the post, and take out the long tube that goes all the way to the bottom of the keg. Now that it's completely disassembled, we're going to want to clean, rinse, and sanitize all of this equipment. So I'm going to step away. I'm going to take care of that. You really don't need to see that. Just clean it with your cleaner of choice. I use PBW, and then I'm going to sanitize it with Star Sand. Be right back once that's all done. I've cleaned and sanitized my keg and all of its parts. I've also cleaned and sanitized the transfer tube because my, my fermenter has a spigot at the bottom, so all I need is a transfer tube. But if you're using a bucket that doesn't have one, make sure that you completely clean and sanitize your auto siphon or whatever you're using to transfer the beer from your fermenter into your keg. Now we just need to put the keg back together and get it ready to accept the beer. Now because this is a brand new keg, and actually I do this every few fill-ups, is I like to, or you should, take all of your rubber gaskets and put a little bit of keg lube on them. This will help get a nice seal on everything and also keep your gaskets lasting a little bit longer. So just a little bit on your finger is all you need. You don't need a lot. Now this is a sanitary lubricant and it's perfectly fine for food. So make sure you get a food grade sanitary lubricant. I'll post the link below for you. Make sure that you put the long tube in the out. Take the short little tube. Again, put a little bit of keg lube on the gasket. Put that in the in. Make sure they're completely seated. Take your outpost, and again, the outpost will not have a notch in it. 
Now when you screw this on, you might need to keep an eye on the tube that's going all the way in. The tube has a bend in it so that it'll go right to the center of the keg, which is the deepest part of the keg. So make sure that your tube stays centered in that location while you're tightening. Take your in post. Again, it has the notch at the bottom. Screw that on. Now this one, it doesn't matter if it spins because it's really short. Take your wrench. Again, mine is 7 eighths. Yours might be a different size. And give them a turn and make sure they're snug. I'm going to remove my transfer hose. And I'll put that on my sanitary tin foil here. Now we need to put the lid on it. And again, a little bit of keg lube on that gasket all the way around. Put your lid in, turn it 90 degrees, close it in place. Make sure your pressure release valve is closed. And now we're going to purge all the oxygen out of that. To do that, we're going to go over to my kegerator and we'll show you how to purge all the air out of it. We're at my kegerator, which is just really a converted home fridge that I've set up to hold six kegs. I'm going to take one of my CO2 lines that's set to about 15 pounds of pressure. I'm going to squirt it with some star sand. I'm actually going to squirt the entire top of my keg with star sand. And I'm going to use that to actually see if I have any leaks. I'm going to put my CO2 on the keg and let it fill up with CO2. Now you can't hear it, but it's slowly filling up. Once it fills up and I don't hear it anymore, I'm actually going to pull the pressure release valve and turn it 90 degrees to leave it open. Now I'm going to leave that open for about 15, 20 seconds. It's been about 20 seconds. I'm going to close the pressure release valve and continue to let it fill up just to make sure that it's completely pressurized. I do 15 to 20 seconds because CO2 is heavier than air. So as the CO2 is entering the keg, it's falling to the bottom and pushing the air out the top. That's why I had the pressure release valve open to push all the air out. So the only thing that should be in here at this point is CO2. I've also closed everything off to see if I have any leaks. The star sand will bubble if there's any leaks on any of the joints. So I'm actually, pre actually pressure testing at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. Now that it's pressurized, I remove my CO2. I remove the pressure by pulling the pressure release valve. Now that all the pressure is released, I'm going to loosely pop the top so we can fill the beer. And we'll be right So we've removed all the air and filled it with just straight CO2. We've purged all the pressure on it. I've popped the top, and I'm going to take the top off and put that into my bucket of sanitizer. I have my transfer tube. I'm going to give it a couple of squirts on the end just to make sure it's stayed sanitized during the whole process. The other thing is on your spigot, give it a spray of sanitizer and shoot it up into the spigot and make sure that that's still nice and clean and sanitized. Hook up your transfer tube to the keg, to the fermenter. Put your transfer tube all the way to the bottom of your keg. You want it at the bottom, you want to avoid any type of splashing. At this point, I remove the bubbler or airlock because you want air to be able to push down. You don't want to create a vacuum. Now all we do is open the spigot, let the beer flow into the keg, and when the keg gets full, we're done. That's really it. Then we'll put the lid back on it, we'll pressurize it, and we'll let it carbonate. You want to make sure you don't overfill your keg. On the keg, at least all the kegs I've ever had on the inside, there's a weld line right here, and then there's a line where the keg kind of bends up. Here's a picture of what it looks like on the inside. You want to be right in between those two lines when you fill it up. Reason for that is you want headspace in there for carbonation. And you also don't want to have it so full that liquid or your beer will actually go back up the CO2 line. So just make sure that once you get your beer to that line, you stop filling it. All right, our keg is full. We've closed the spigot. Then remove the transfer hose. 
So we're going to very slowly pull that out of the beer keg. Right, and we're just going to put our tube in the top of our fermenter just to keep it there out of the way for now. As you can see, there's a little bit of beer left in the bottom of the fermenter. If you want, you can try to get that into a bottle and use some carbonation tabs to carbonate it that way. I personally just leave it in there because it helps make sure that I don't get any of the stuff that's on the bottom and I have a fairly clean beer in my keg. At this point, we need to put the lid on it. Now remember, my lid has been sitting in the, in the star sand for the entire time. Put that on, close the lid. Now I need to take this over to our kegerator, purge out any of the air that's left in there, put it under pressure, and let it carbonate. We're back in my kegerator. The keg has been filled. Now we're going to force carbonate our beer. We're going to take another line that's set at 30 PSI. If you don't have all these lines, just turn up your regulator to 30 PSI on whatever line you have. We're going to spray everything down with star sand again including my CO2 line, and we're going to put the CO2 line on the end. Now it's filled with pressure. To make sure that the only thing that's in the air space above the beer is CO2, we're going to release the pressure release valve, let it fill, release the pressure release valve, rinse and repeat three to four times. All right, so we have purged any air that could have gotten in during all the process. Even though that we removed the air earlier, this is just a double check. As I no noted earlier, this line is set at 30 PSI. I know for my system and the way I like my beers carbonated, I will put this in the fridge. My fridge is set to about 40 degrees, a little bit colder than that, somewhere between 38 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to let it sit in here for 36 hours. After 36 hours, with it being under 30 PSI pressure, I'm usually pretty close to the amount of carbonation that I like. If it's not quite carbonated enough, I'll let it sit for another 12 hours and test it again. If it's a little over carbonated, you can release the pressure valve, remove the CO2 line, and it will release some of the CO2 from the liquid. And you can do that a few times until the carbonation lowers. At this point, the only thing left to do is for me to put my label on it so I know what's in here, put it in the fridge, close it up, and let it sit for 36 hours. All right, the beer's in the fridge, getting cold, carbonating. In about 36 hours, like I said there, uh, we'll go back to it. We'll check the carbonation level and see if where it's at. If we need to carbonate it a little bit longer, we'll let it sit. If not, we're good to serve it. Serving your beer off of a keg, that's a whole nother subject about how to determine line length, CO2 pressure, and all that. I'll cover that in a later video. For now, all that's left is I just need to clean up our fermenter and any parts that we've used and get ready to enjoy our new beer. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. Hope you learned something, and I hope that I've inspired you to start home brewing your own beer. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell to be notified anytime I post a new video. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button for a like. Remember, home brewing is really fun, but so is drinking responsibly. I'm Coach Chris, and we'll see you next brew. Hello everyone, Coach Chris here with Wolf Moon Brewing. Today we're going to keg a beer once the car goes by.